Homosexuality is forbidden, and the church has often taken a beating for its stance on it. The hospital, the hospital Christian Fellowship, however, is looking at the topic from a different point of view, raising concerns surrounding the sexual aspect of homosexuality. While the group Lawyers for Jesus says if the act is legalized, it could spell trouble for those who oppose that view. Dr. Gathering Craig notes that penetrative anal sex is not exclusive to homosexuals, as it has evolved as a common practice among heterosexuals. But she says people belonging to the group of men who have sex with men are at a higher risk for HIV infections. Doctors have reported an 86% increase in HIV infection between the years 2000 to 2006 among homosexuals. Dr. Craig says this prompted drug manufacturers in the United States to put forward the argument that may be a preventative drug for HIV should be developed for men who have sex with men. Practice in the community is not to use condoms because one could imagine how difficult condom use is when one is penetrated on an anus that has a tight sphincter at the end and so the condom increases difficulty in terms of pleasure and having sex. So very, very common in the community is the use of what we call bare backing where they use no condoms at all and therein lies the risk. And then even so, if you use condoms, there's still other help risks. The anus itself was not designed to be involved in sex. Dr. Craig says leakages, infections, and serious irritation to the anus can occur during sexual activity. And the incidence of anal cancer has also increased over the past decade due to the change in sexual activities. She says while she would not like the law to change, she wants the church to adopt a more compassionate way of dealing with the issue, as their mentor Jesus Christ did with all he encountered. This is what the church should respond by doing. Preach the gospel let people change. We are not to treat homosexuals with contempt, with disdain, with discrimination, with a definition that they're the worst kind of people in the face of this good. We have to follow that pattern. Be gracious, be respectful, treat them with dignity. They are people too. When it comes to the law, the group Lawyers for Jesus believes that if homosexuality is legalized, there could be a new era of discrimination against those who oppose to it. Attorney at law, Hyacinth Griffith says in other jurisdictions where homosexuality is legal, people who oppose the lifestyle have been persecuted. And that is quite evident in the UK, which is very close in terms of the legal system to that which we have here. The bubble laws were repealed in 1967. And since then, there has been repeated incidents of the persecution of those who share a different view or hold a different view. Ms. Griffith gave an example of a born-again Christian family with Jamaican roots in the UK, the Johns. They were banned from fostering children, something they have been doing in England since 1992. The couple encountered the problem in 2006 because of their stance on homosexuality when they wanted to adopt a 16th child. We have to consider how that will impact on all other areas of our society. We have to consider how it affects on our education system, how it affects our society, the framework, the foundation of our society, the family, how it impacts our health care provision, how it impacts how we live our lives day to day in society, and whether it is that that is something which is sustainable in terms of our development. Ms. Griffith says that over the past decade, the issue of gender has arisen when talking about homosexuality. She says gender is no longer referred to as male or female, but the term is now being redefined to suit the homosexual lifestyle. What has created the confusion is that there is an attempt consistently within the last decade to redefine the term gender and that it is now considered the academics tell you that gender has nothing to do with your biological makeup. It has to do with your socialization. When did this arise? I invite you to ask your grandparents, what do you understand by the term gender? And in, in fact, when the international treaties were being signed, the understanding of that term was male and female. And in every treaty, every international treaty, you will see that there is no definition of gender as is being promoted. The definition of gender, it says, is according to the usual, ordinary, and natural interpretation of the word. What is the normal, natural interpretation of that word in the Trinidad and Tobago context? I dare say it is male and female. You ask the man in the street. Last Friday, a small group of pastors gathered in front of the parliament 
calling for the preservation of traditional family values. We believe that God made men and women so that the family can be preserved. We are standing solidly upon traditional family values that is man and woman coming together and forming a family. In our final installment, we'll hear from the Hindu community on the matter.